Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-036359, 0703-768198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better I am the hymn writer said stand now said there are trials dark on every hand and we cannot understand but when the trumpet sounds when the saints the overcomers when they are gathered we will understand we will tell the story I'm more concerned about that. I'm more concerned about getting you in a good place that at any point his glory does not catch you unawares. Now tonight I said I want to build a little further. Just a little further. Because that will be important. Understanding is very crucial for a correct standing. Eh? What did I say? It's because it is what is under your standing. And that's what we call understanding. The under to your standing is what determines how you stand. It's what determines your standing. It's what determines how you stand and we stand. So, understanding is what I'm dealing with tonight. Understanding what is this issue of light. When we say, let there be light. Maybe some of you are just imagining that when we say, Lord, let there be light. Then God will shout again and say, let there be light. That's why we are beginning to have a little understanding. So return with me to our passage in the morning. We were reading John chapter 1. We were reading 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Is that what we were reading? And we were tracing some few things. Now, let's return to those two passages again. It might look like repetition to you, but no. It's not repetition. We are digging. We are digging around a matter. God will give you understanding in Jesus' name. Are you there with me now? John chapter 1. John 1. John 1. In him was life. That's John 1 verse 4. And the life was what? So that's the first thing I don't want you to forget. That the light we are talking about. The light that shines and darkness cannot comprehend. What was it? It's life. It's life. It is not mere illumination. The light that overwhelms darkness is not just what? 
Illumination is not illumination. It's not rays. It's not rays. When we began to study physics in our days, and we began to study light energy, we understand that the light you see here, even the light of the sun, they were quantums. They were quantity of energy that had been packaged in very small, 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 small capsules. And each time you see light, if you look at it very well, when you look at it from a primitive sense, you would see, you, it, it will appear to you as if they were particles. Have you noticed that anytime you look at, you see as if it's particles, but streamy, in such a way that you may not be able to see the, 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 the discrete nature of it again. It now looks like a flood. That even though, you know, it's not like a big flood, we know that each of it is, is, is a particle. In physics language, we call it photons. We call it photons. And the totality of the energy it releases wherever it falls is governed, is determined by the frequency of its movement. But the light we are talking about tonight is not a stream of photons. It's not capsules of energy particles. It's not something you can focus and when it falls on a surface, it can be converted onto heat energy. How I many of you remember that sometimes you are doing an experiment and you get, you get maybe a mirror and you try to focus it on the sun and at an angle and you focus it on a paper. And what happened to that paper? It just got pumped. We were trying to understand what is light energy. The light that you have been talking about, that you know about, that we put as touch light or this light or that light, that is not what we are dealing with. Amen. And the light that deals with the supernatural darkness that has brought chaos, that has brought confusion into lives of people, that has turned the entire world into a wilderness. That light, the Bible said, is what? It's life. So when we keep saying, let there be light, honestly, what God is saying is, let there be what? A life. A life that is light. Said in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines. And when they said the light shines, the other way to put it is and the life flows. And the life breaks forth. And as it breaks forth because it is light, Darkness cannot comprehend it. Do you have that understanding before I go? That this light we are talking about, what is it? It's life. It's life. It's a life that is light. Now, Take one more step, still in John chapter 1, and I will be sure that you understand. It might be a repetition to some, 
but I'm not repeating myself at all. I am simply making concrete the platform on which I perceive the Holy Spirit is going to be operating with each one of you from here henceforth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to know and the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, we noted right from verse 9 that the Bible was talking that when he talked about that life that is light, he was actually first talking about Jesus, our Lord. Is that all right? That was the true light which lights. So I want you to note verse 9. We didn't comment on verse 9 very strongly in the morning. We are not going to comment so strongly on it tonight. But I want you to bear a little insight into it before we go. That was the true light. You will notice that those of you that carry Old King James, when you come to that verse 9, did you see that the true light was capital? Eh? Did you see that it was capital? That's to tell you that it's a person. That's to tell you that it's not just a mere instrument to see. It's a person. It's a life. What does he do? What did verse 9 say that light does? What does he do, please? He lights, he lighted every man that cometh into the world. Does that show you that every man that comes into the world? They came engulfed in what? In darkness. Does that help you to understand that as men were being born into the world, as they were stepping into the world system, even if they were to be born on the pulpit like this, if they were born of a woman, into what were they born? Excuse me, talk to me. They are born into darkness. And they need to be lighted. They need this life light to break the ring of darkness around them. To destroy the engulfing of darkness. To release them from darkness to set them free from darkness my brother my sister let me tell you the whole world the whole world what does the bible say about the whole world it said the whole world lies where in the power of darkness the whole world the whole world the whole world engulfed in darkness. Education is good, but it does not release men from what? From darkness. Education is a kind of light. So they said he's an enlightened man. Eh? When they talk about education as a kind of enlightenment, can I tell you the meaning of what they are saying? They are saying that he is not ignorant. He has been given some level of what? Information that at least makes him to know. Now, what we are dealing with tonight is not enlightenment that you can get by some information. We are not talking about enlightenment that education gives. 
Education is good. It brings mental enlightenment. But it never releases anybody from darkness. May I inform you that all the world, the whole world, the whole world, whether America, Australia, Europe, Asia, each time they say Africa is the dark continent. I used to wonder because when I went to all those other continents, honestly speaking, there's no difference. Maybe there's even a bigger matter. Darkness that does not appear dark. Are you understanding? Darkness that does not appear how dark. People are in, in very thick darkness. But it doesn't look dark. When I went, where did we go the other time? Not uh, Belgium. Where did we go? We went somewhere again. Not Belgium. Not France. One of those. Eh? Yes. Now I discovered that when you want to marry and you go to the registry, forget about going to church. Church wedding is almost completely discarded because there are not people going to church anymore. Now, but when you go now for registry marriage, they have stopped writing marriage certificates and asking you to go and change your name. He said, don't change your name. Because we know that in less than two years, you will come and change it again. Marriages don't last in those nations now for more than one year. Now, so when you see them walking together and moving like this, you will think that they are the best of friends. It's not true. Darkness that does not appear dark. I made a mistake when I went to the UK I'm preaching the gospel I'm reaching the white people and the word of God was going on very well and I think some of them are desiring to be discipled and I mistakenly stumbled on the matter of marriage I say I mistakenly <laughs> because the shock I received I'm talking to a pastor here and I'm talking to him I said look marriage is for life he said Billy I guess we need to talk about that very seriously because I am in my third marriage He's in his third marriage and his pastor. Darkness that does not appear dark. And because when men have stayed long in this kind of darkness, they try to officialize it. They try to theologize it and make it look as if it is theological. They make it look as if, well, you know, the Bible is not. Uh, uh, I say, what else? What do you expect the Bible to say? What has the Bible said? Let's read it again. And I say, well, you know, um, 
everybody has his own opinion about that kind of thing. So I say, what? What? What opinion? God said, I hate divorce. <laughs> you know, as I'm reading, I say, I hate divorce. Because you can't read, I hate divorce and be smiling. Eh? Can you sincerely read that scripture? I hate divorce. I said, I hate divorce. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Can you read it like that? I said, how are you reading your Bible? And you are comfortable. A young man wanted to take a decision. Very serious decision. Because the word of God has affected him. He said, Billy, I said, yes. He said, look, I want to follow the word of God. This matter, I want my life to be correct. I know I have made a mistake, but I don't want to make another one. I want to live right. And I'm encouraging him. And as I'm encouraging him, he will break down. Sometimes I'll pray with him all night. And when I'm going, he will escort me to the train station and said, Really, are you leaving me back here? I said, well, you have to be here. He said, I wish you will carry me along. Because I don't know what to do now when I return. I realize that as I'm talking to him, he wants to obey God. He goes back to where he's coming from, the church, the pastor. Couldn't tell him not to go and misbehave because even himself. Then I thought I already had a convert somewhere and we were moving where and they are doing well. And I invited this one to follow me for discipleship. And because we are staying in a house, I didn't know when he got discussing with these other people. And they started telling him, say, well, you know, <laughs> you know, when I was with my first husband, And that man came to me and said, Billy. I said, yes. He said, maybe this thing is not wrong after all. I said, what? He said, I spoke with these other people and they just... Where do I start now? Where do you state the truth again? Darkness has engulfed the whole world. We went to another conference like this. Imagine that you are in a conference like this where we are all doing good meetings and during break, people are eating together. Can I go about supervising what people are discussing while they are eating together? Eh? They are talking together and you, you think they are having a nice time. I didn't know that within a meeting of less than 100 people, this man, as if he was making research, he has spoken to about five different couples eh? who are either in their third marriages or fourth marriages. They are all sitting there. The last time I saw him, he just, he just told me, he said, the spirit is willing. He actually wanted to follow the word of God, but uh, there is no other way. So I wish I were with you. I'm looking at darkness that has engulfed the whole world. Some of you don't understand. You don't understand the level of darkness that is engulfing the entire system. But what is God's answer to darkness? Eh? What kind of light? It has to be life. It's life. It is life that is light. So when the Bible says it lights every man that comes into the world, I want you to know that as I'm standing before you tonight, the world is waiting for the life that will lighten them. 
Your generation is waiting for a life that lights men that have come into the world. As they were talking about homosexuals, I kept wondering, why should they be discussing that kind of thing? Only to discover that honestly speaking, in those nations, it had been so discussed as if it's normal. In fact, when they see you speaking against it, everybody say, well, you are not tolerant. Eh? They look at it and say, look, you are, you are old-fashioned. Why, why are you attacking people? Why are you putting people in bondage? Ah. Why are you so strong about that? No, that's how God made them. Darkness that looks enlightened. Darkness that is speaking good English. Darkness that is well researched. Darkness. But what we deal with that darkness is a life that is light. And if God is speaking tonight to several of you here, it's because we have come to a, a place a position in the purpose of God, in the plan of God, in the will of God in our generation. When God wants to visit the earth again, when God wants to reset issues again, when God wants to re rejuvenate his purpose in our generation once again, and the answer, the answer, so as the word of God was coming to us this morning, I found that when they said there's a people that sit in darkness, light sprung up. I discovered that when they said light sprung up, it was not as if somebody put on a switch and a fluorescent light or what do you call it now? A floor light just came out and said, ah, there's light now. No. When they say light sprung forth and they saw a great light, what was the Bible talking about? A life was sent into their midst. A life that is light went into their midst and began to shine. And that's why darkness could not comprehend it. Tonight, sir. Tonight, sir. The cry of God. Again. When God said, let there be light. He was simply saying, where is a life? That can shine. To arrest darkness. I'm sorry if you look as if I'm confusing you. I don't want to confuse you, but I want you to settle down very well. I want you to settle down very well. Some of you, somehow, you are excited, excited about many, many things that look like good activities. For example, for example, some of you will be excited if somebody says, yes, there is a particular place in your village where they buried your umbilical cord and where your progress had been tied down. We are going there for deliverance. You will be excited as if you are doing something serious. You will go then when you get there, you will be parabolating around a tree. You'll be moving like this. Sss, 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 
As if darkness is ever scared with sneezing. Some of you are very expert in sneezing anointing. Sometimes you know you go and I say, God, what is the meaning of all of this? Sometimes it is that you gather together and somebody is teaching you how to shoot machine gun prayer. That your enemy are sitting somewhere and I let us now shoot them. Let's shoot them with machine gun prayer. So everybody will do like this as if they are, they are putting a gun in their hand. And what are they doing now? Now, God's children. God's children. Brothers and sisters. Who are seeking genuine knowledge of God. They have been lured into endless activities. Endless activities. Satan enjoys that. Why does he enjoy it? He says, let them do it because it doesn't affect me. I'm not scared about that. Not scared about that. There's only one thing that scares me. That put me away. What is it? Light. That is life. Some of you don't understand. That even some of your prayers is what is making witchcraft to increase over your life. You don't know. You don't understand. You don't know that the Bible says hatred Is like witchcraft. And the first thing some of these teachings gave you is to infuriate your bitterness against somebody. Are you hearing me? By the time somebody paints a picture of those who are sitting on your promotion, those who have taken a confederacy together and now they discuss you at 1 a.m. at the beginning of the month and when the moon of your month is about to open, they already program your moon so that you will not progress this month. And as he's describing it, you know what is happening in your heart? Something is moving. He said, wow! Those wicked people. Those wicked people. And as I see you shaking your head, you are imbibing the spirit of hatred. It's the same spirit that is working in the witches. That is now working in you. How many of you, can you hear me very well, that your marriages are scattered? Because when they were praying, they say, your mother-in-law, your mother-in-law, your mother-in-law, She's not too tall. She's not too tall. She's light complexioned. She's the one. Oh, we saw her. Kaya, 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 kaya. They saw what? Nothing. Nothing. Confusion. So when you get home, your mother-in-law wanted to greet your greet you and carry your baby. So, no, no, no. The blood of Jesus. 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 Ah, your mother-in-law say, ah, what is it? The blood of Jesus. I have known. Mama said, what did you know? I have known. Your mother-in-law say, what is this incantation? That you are calling now. 
She said, here is water for you to drink. Say, I know. They already told me. Your plans. Now you are doing like this. You are doing like this against the mother that deliver your husband. You don't know that you are in trouble already. You don't know that you are in a great problem. You have entered into darkness. You don't know what the Bible says. It says, if any man says he's in the light and hates a brother, he is in darkness until yesterday. Even now, now, now. Some of you, they say it's your brother-in-law. So as soon as the man is coming, you go and stand at the gate. Shh. 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 Give up. Pass. No way. No way. No way. The gates of hell shall not prevail against me. And that gate of hell is your brother-in-law. You are already in darkness. If God doesn't deliver you from this meeting, you are in great problem. Oh. You, are, you have entered into the restlessness of your life. You are sowing a seed. Your children wanted to greet their cousin. Those babies, they don't know the difference. They saw their cousin, they wanted to say, no, no, don't go there, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Don't go there. The mark, the mark, the mark, the mark of the covenant. The mark of the covenant. Your small boy, six year old, he said, Mommy, what is that? Why can't I play with chooks? Say, mm -mm. stay here, stay here. When you are going, you lock your children inside the house. You don't know what you are doing. No. You are already in darkness. If we don't deal with those kind of those kind of maneuvers that the devil has brought into the body of Christ, you will think that you are making progress. And the life is the light of men. And the light shines. So as I'm reading the word of God, I say, oh. So it is not those. I knew some of us didn't even come from that kind of background. You will be thinking as if there's something there. Some of us we were born in the shrine. You hear me? We were named inside it. We grew there. Look at the shrine. Look at my room. When I gave my life to Jesus, I said, what do I do? He said, number one, I delivered you in this house deliberately. So that I can have light in this place. You don't go anywhere. I'm sleeping there. They are making incantation. What does incantation do to a man that carries life? That is light. Didn't the Bible say there is no enchantment against Jacob? There is no divination against Israel. Is that what the Bible say? Ah! Uh -uh. Didn't the Bible say, take cancer together? It shall not do what? It shall not stand. Is that what the Bible said? Didn't the Bible say, in gathering they will gather? But whosoever gather against you, for your sake shall do what? Scatter. Is that what the Bible said? Did the Bible say no weapon fashion against me will prosper? Is that what the Bible said? Did it say this is the heritage of the servant of the Lord? 
Did he say from me comes their righteousness? But the spirit of fear that is the chief weapon of darkness is being preached every day. Is being introduced. Maybe one of you is just pregnant for one month now. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. You hear? Are you hearing me? Don't do what? Don't go home. You don't go home. In fact, the spirit just revealed right now that those who normally rose pregnancies, they have heard. They have heard that you are pregnant. And they are planning how to roast it. So anytime you are feeling a little heat in your stomach, they are about to roast it. Excuse me. So anything, no, mm, 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 no, mm, no, mm. you will not pluck it. No way, mm, no way, no way. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You make a caricature of that great name. The name of the Lord is what? What is a tower? Excuse me, what's a tower? Very, very strongly built. Say the righteous runs into that name. And what is the Bible saying? Safe. But I see you carry a strong tower. Look, look at the way you are behaving with a strong tower. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Ha, Jesus. Ha, Jesus. When you carelessly knock your leg against something because you are not looking very ha they have come they have come ha jeez hey ha ha jeez 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 Jesus Christ is not jeez is Jesus <laughs> What did I call him is Jesus not jeez ha jeez ha jeez jeez No my lord is not jeez my Lord is Jesus Christ, the Lord. Shout hallelujah, somebody. The light that lights every man that comes into the world is this life. When Jesus steps into your life, he says you cannot walk in darkness. You cannot walk in darkness. Let's say to that tonight. I want you to know as I'm talking tonight that the only thing that bothers the devil is light. So if you see anything the devil is resisting, he said, for the God of this world, what has he done? He blocked their ears. No. It's no ears that matter to the devil. He blinded their eyes. The eyes of their mind. So that the light of the glorious gospel of our Lord Jesus may not do what? Shine unto them. As we are talking tonight. As we are looking unto God personally tonight. As we are seeking the help of the Spirit of God over your life tonight. When we say let the light shine, let there be light. We are simply saying let life. The light that shines and darkness cannot comprehend. Let it shine. And as the light shines, wherever it shines, darkness 
cannot comprehend it. So if God wants to dismantle all the darkness in your village, he will not carry oil. Because the problem is not oil. Are we together? What will he, what will he send? What kind of light? That is life. So I say, ah, if I go there, hey, if I go there, hey, if I go there, you do understand. When God wants to dismantle all the all the jargons that have been put together in that village. It will send life that is light. Sometime it can even allow them to try to make efforts. They could even be doing something as if, hey, this one is going to die. But that's a life that is shining. That darkness cannot comprehend. When they have gone everywhere, they will return back and they say, there is no way. There is no way. Leave this one alone. Leave him alone. I remember in my house. <laughs> I don't know what, what when they went around and the oracle said, leave him alone. Alat, alak, alatak, atakiti. They have a language. They said this one. He has, he has received his own faith. Upside down. You know why? Church deacons used to come to collect power. Pastors used to come, come to my house. They say, we are having church committee meeting tomorrow. There is one man that used to argue with me. When I open my mind, I say, yes. He can only say, yes, sir. Baba will say, is that what you want? He say, yes. So take this. So you see him put something under his tongue. You will think he's praising God. We know that. When men have not touched life that we are talking about, they look for means. Are we together tonight? So, what is God wanting to do with you? He wants to put inside of you what? Life that is light. He wants to make you an answer to your own generation. 